Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and have a very good day. Today I'm going to share with you how to design reinforced concrete pad footing on axial load. So as a previous class we already done on the introduction so I do already share our video in our uh, YouTube channel so therefore I will give you an example for reinforced concrete pad footing axial load. So in pad footing design we have a few examples so this one is for the reinforced concrete pad footing axial load then we will uh, further with another example uh, for the axial load with the moment and then combined footing and also designing a, a pal cap. So for this example, so we have this pet footing. So the information given or the design specification given here is here, the permanent action GK 500 kilonewton, variable action 350 kilonewton, column size 250 millimeter time 250 millimeter. So sometimes the size of the, the permanent action and variable action is uh, combination of total permanent action and variable action. So in this case, it's a separate, separate value. So then the design life is 50 years, exposure class is XC1, material FCK is 35 Newton per millimeter squared, FYK 500 Newton per millimeter squared, unit weight of concrete 25 kilonewton per meter cube, soil bearing capacity in order for us to determine the uh, size of the footing so we have to know the soil bearing capacity so soil bearing capacity is determined by doing the soil uh, investigation so from that soil investigation we have to determine what is the uh, values for the soil bearing capacity for that area so diameter bar is 16 millimeter and footing thickness is 400 millimeter so as Usual for the nominal cover, the first step we have to calculate the C nominal, which is equal to the minimum cover plus the deviation. So deviation is uh, usually 10 millimeter. And then the C minimum uh, is using the same as what we have done in reinforced concrete uh, simply supported column, which is uh, then we have to determine based on bond requirement and also exposure class only we have to compare either which the value given the highest value then we have to add with the deviation equal to 10 millimeter so the answer is 26 millimeter then we have to run out into 30 millimeter so next process we have to determine the size of the foundation that we are going to design so we have to justify what is the size in order for us to design the actual uh the footing due to the axial load so normally for axial load we will have a square footing so uh, other types of loading we will have a different types of uh, shape for example rectangular or we can have a combined footing and so on so uh, the service load here is equal to n equal to gk plus uk which is 850 kilonewton and then the footing surface rate is assumption of 10 uh, percent from the service load which is 85 kilonewton then we the total load is equal to 850 kilonewton plus 85 kilonewton so the area of the footing uh, is equal to the total of the service load plus with the foot of footing surface uh, divided by the soil bearing capacity then we can get the uh, area required for the footing so we may try the size of the footing okay by square root the area of the footing required so we will have the uh, approximate value for example here i propose 3.25 times 3.25 with the depth of the foundation of footing is equal to 400 millimeter so the minimum depth is normally 400 millimeter and the maximum is 600 millimeter so the minimum and the maximum should be followed the requirement that has been justified for the design okay so the area that you re, uh, provide here okay should be bigger than the area required that you have calculated before then you have to calculate the new self weight based on, on the new size of your footing which is 3.25 times 3.25 times 0 0.5 times 25 uh, which is the unit weight of concrete equal to 106 kilonewton then the next process is you have to calculate the service soil pressure. So the service soil pressure is equal to N plus W, which is N is the service load, uh, the service load, which is the total GK and also QK. And then 
plus with the new W, okay, and then divided by the A is the area. So you have to make sure that the value for the service soil pressure should be less than the provided or the the early the uh, early value of your soil bearing capacity has been determined from the soil investigation. So what happened if you get the service soil pressure is bigger than the soil bearing capacity? Normally we have to change the size and uh, means that you have to decrease the size of the footing. So other than that, you have to do uh, some uh, additional soil investigation by increasing the soil bearing capacity for that area. For example, we have to uh, excavate all the excessive soil that give a low soil bearing capacity then we have to uh, we have to fill up with a new soil and then check this again the soil bearing capacity and make sure that the soil bearing capacity is higher so uh, normally 100 kilonewton per meter square is quite high value so you have to make sure that when you would like to propose your size you have to uh be careful it's not that too big compared to the as uh, area of the footing required so that you will ensure that the soil uh, pressure will be in between the value that you need process in analysis process the first one we have to calculate the ultimate axial force so the ultimate axial force is by calculating ned equal to 1.35 gk plus 1.5 qk so the answer is 1200 kilonewton so next is the soil pressure at ultimate load. If P is equal to NED over A, which is 1,200 times 10 power of 3 divided by the AS provided here. This is the area of the footing. Sorry, a, uh, area of the footing provided here. So the answer here is 113.64 kN per meter square. The next process is soil pressure per meter length. So it's equal to 113. 0.63 times 3.25 is equal to 369 kilonewton per meter. Then, we have to calculate the maximum moment at the column phase. The moment is equal to WLC squared over 2. The LC is equal to B minus H of the column divided by 2. The answer here is 1,500 millimeter. Then, the moment is equal to 369 times 10 power of 6 times 1.5 squared over 2 is equal to 415 kilonewton meter the first process to design we have to calculate the main reinforcement the effective depth d is equal to h minus c nominal minus 1.5 diameter bar is equal to 400 minus 30 minus 1.5 time the diameter bar 16 is equal to 346 millimeter the bending moment M is equal to 415 meter from the previous calculation. Then we have to calculate K and also Z, same as what we have done in simply supported beam design or slab. Okay, so then we have to provide the AS required. So the AS required M is equal to 0 0.87 FYKZ. Then you get here 2903. So in order for you to provide the reinforcement for the foundation, you have to increase the numbers of the bar. So you can have the uh the numbers of the bar much more bigger compared to the uh beam or the slab so for example here i provide 20 h20 why do i provide 20 h20 although the as required is only 2902 so because i would like to control the cracking check so because normally the cracking check the maximum is 300 so after we check it all those uh cracking check in my previous calculation because this is based on the fingertips experience so normally at least you may provide the 15 or 20 numbers and above because we will like to reduce the spacing between the bar so because we would like to control the spacing of the bar so that it will not pass due to the crack check okay so in my case here so the provision of the reinforcement is 20 h20 so it's not called as an over design because when we would like to check the crack check it will pass okay so the minimum and the maximum reinforcement area here so the s minimum is equal to 0 0.26 fct mbtd over fyk so bt here is uh, the the b of the footing and then the d is d of the uh from the effective depth of the footing okay and then for the 0 0.013 BD, so it's equal to 0 0.013 times B times D. So, and then the SAS minimum is equal to 
0.71 millimeter squared then you have to calculate the s maximum then you have to make sure that the s provided is in between the s minimum and the s maximum so you do not worry to provide numbers of bar is uh, which is large number so because of the s maximum is really high because it is a uh, footing okay okay and then this is the things that we have to check in a shear which is the first one is the vertical shear second one is the punching shear and then you have to calculate also the maximum punching shear at the column you have to make sure all those three conditions in the shear should be passed so if it is one of the uh, checking is failed you have to do or redesign the section or you have to do an improvement so that your design will be passed so the first one we have to calculate the punching shear check okay in the punching shear check the first one we have to draw the punching shear check uh, for the vertical the vertical shear okay for the vertical shear so you have to check at the column parameter uh, at the column phase 1.0 d so which is the the area of the uh, the the location of the critical uh, vertical shear okay so here is the diagram showing the uh, vertical shear position which is 1d from the column face which is the area is here okay at 1154 millimeter okay so how to calculate this okay so which is equal to 3250 okay minus with the column okay and then divided by 2 you will get your lc so and then from that lc okay you minus with 1d you will get this 1154 so next we have to calculate the design shear force vd is equal to w time the vertical shear length okay so w is equal to w time vd is equal to w time lc minus 1d so you get this answer and then design the shear resistance as usual you have to calculate the v uh, rdc okay so here is the process of to calculate the vrdc you have to determine the value for k and value for rho one as what we have done before next we have to calculate the bar extend beyond critical section either we need it or not so if the condition of the lc minus 1.0 d minus c nominal is bigger than the lbd plus d okay then the bar extension for beyond the critical section is not required so this is the formula in order for you to check this condition either you need to extend the uh, reinforcement due to the critical condition or not okay and then you have to calculate the vrdc and v mean so you have to make sure your vrdc is bigger than v mean then your vertical shear check is passed the next one is the punching shear so the punching shear is occur at 2.0 d from the column face average d is equal to h minus c nominal minus diameter bar then the answer is 354 millimeter and then 2d is equal to 2 time with d which is 708 millimeter then this is the diagram to draw uh, the condition of the punching shear position so the first one in order for you to calculate the punching shear uh, to check the punching shear resistance punching shear condition so you have to calculate the punching shear resistance so the first one you have to calculate the control parameter u which is equal to four times which the hc so why is four times the hc which is the parameter of the column so if for example the size of your column okay is not equal for example the b and also h is different so you have to uh, uh you have to calculate the area by calculating two times with hc and two times with the uh, bc so that is the area of the column plus with 2 pi 2d and then you get the control parameter u and then you have to calculate the area within parameter a is equal to area of the column okay 0 0.25 times 0 0.25 okay this is the parameter huh? and then plus 4hc times 2d plus pi 2d squared then you get the area within the parameter and then you have the check here okay it should be less than 9 ac lbd plus d and then the reinforcement is not contribute to the punching shear resistance okay so then it's okay so if it is contribute you have to consider another 
uh, calculation in order for you to provide the extra uh, reinforcement because uh, you have to extend due to the punching shear condition. So next is a punching shear resistance. You have to calculate the new VRDC is equal to V min. The formula is 0 0.035 K power of 3 over 2 time FCK power 1 over 2 time UD. And then the U is the area of the uh, the area here. Okay, from the previous calculation. Sorry. Here is your U 5448, okay, time with the D, okay. And then you get your VRDC and then you have to calculate the punching shear force is equal to VED equal to P time BH minus A and then you get 1216. Then you have to check either VED should be bigger or lesser than VRDC. Normally, you have to make sure that your uh, VED, okay, should be bigger than your Uh, in in my case here, our VED is equal to 1,200, okay? My punching shear is V... So, VED is bigger than VRDC. The punching shear at the column face is failed. Therefore, increase the column size proposed because we have to make sure that our... VED is, uh, VRDC is bigger, okay? And then, the second one is increase the footing depth. And then, we have to calculate the maximum punching shear at the column parameter, which is VRD max, so it's equal to 0 0.5 times UD. The UD here is 4 times 250, the parameter of the column, so it's not same as what we have done before, okay? So, you have to make sure you have to use the right formula here, the right value here, and then if the VRD max is bigger than VED max, then the answer will be okay. Okay. So the cracking check is same what we have done in a beam design. So I do not want to repeat the same thing again. So we have to calculate the steel stress here and then we have to check the exposure class and then the WK here. Okay. Either is 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It depends on the uh given okay value and then the by interpolation the allowable or the maximum spacing between the reinforcement is one seven six millimeter then the actual is equal to b minus two so c nominal minus diameter bar minus n divided by n minus one is equal to one six seven millimeter then the crack check is uh, passed so if for example the crack check is failed you have to increase the numbers of bar because you would like to reduce the spacing of the bar so that is not more than the allowable value here, here is the detailing for the reinforcement for the uh, footing uh, respect respect to the axial load so i hope that by using this example you know how to design pad footing uh, square footing due to the axial load so in next example we will go on the next uh, types of loading which is the angel and also moment that's it for my presentation or my sharing session for today thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh